All right, so uh, let's test what we, in fact, know about the photoelectric effect. And before we do that, actually, we're going to uh, calculate what we would predict. So when we do the demo, it will be meaningful, and we can tell whether we're successful or not. So hopefully, we will be successful. Um, and as I point this out, we now know how to do any kind of photoelectric effect problem. Also, this means you should be able to go back to Monday's notes, where we filled in all those graphs which were what different scientists were observing when they were measuring either the frequency or the, uh, the intensity of light that was irradiating different types of metals, and also the number of electrons ejected and the kinetic energy of those electrons ejected. You should be able to maybe print out a blank copy of those notes from the website and fill in all those graphs not for memorizing them, but now just understanding how the photoelectric effect works. Um, all right, so let's do an in-class problem, and this will be done with uh, zinc. We have a zinc plate up here, and we're going to, uh, in a minute, I'll describe how we can probe if electrons are coming off of it, but we're going to irradiate it with two different light sources. We have a UV lamp uh, right here, which is centered at a wavelength of 254 nanometers. And then, since we have my red laser pointer, we will also try it with the red laser pointer, uh, which is uh, centered at a wavelength of 700 nanometers. So there are a few questions that we need to answer first. So we're see we want to see, do we expect to eject electrons off of this metal surface, or do we expect that we don't have enough energy? So that means we're going to need to figure out what is the energy per photon that's emitted by that UV light. Also, what's the energy per photon of this red laser pointer? And then it's also worth uh, trying a calculation dealing with intensity. So let's also try calculating the number of photons that would be emitted by this laser pointer if, for example, uh, we were to use it for 60 seconds and this were a one milliwatt uh, laser. So let's do some of these calculations. Starting first with what is the energy per photon, and let's start with the UV lamp. So we know that energy is equal to Planck's constant times nu, uh, but what we know about the lamp is its wavelength, so, or the light that's emitted. We know that nu is equal to C over wavelength, so we can figure out the energy of each photon emitted by our UV lamp by saying E is equal to HC over wavelength. So let's just plug in these numbers here. That means our energy is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. And then we have C, uh, the speed of light, 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And we want to divide all of that by our wavelength. And to keep our units the same, we'll do meters. So that's 254 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. So hopefully, if some of you have your calculators with you, you can confirm the answer that I got. Uh, which is that the energy is 7.82 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So remember, what we're talking about here is the amount of energy that's in each photon. So if we think about the work function for zinc, and the work function for zinc is 6.9 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, do we expect that when we shine our UV light on the zinc, we'll be able to eject electrons? What do you think? Yes? <laughs> Good, okay. Um, anyone disagree? No, okay, and that's correct, because each, each photon of light actually has more energy than is needed to eject an electron, so we would expect to see uh, electrons ejected with the, UV laser, or with the UV light source. 